David Lynch is one of horror's greatest filmmakers of all time, no question, and if you don't agree with me, well I'm hoping this video will give you some new perspective. However, to be fair, Lynch's primary genre isn't exactly horror and instead the best way to describe his films are Lynchian, with the filmmaker responsible for some of the most memorably terrifying moments in cinematic history. So saying that, let's jump into our list of the top 5 scariest David Lynch movies. Before we begin though, be sure to stick around until the end of the video where I'll be responding to some of your comments. Alright, let's jump in. Coming in at 5, Twin Peaks Fire Walk With Me. I love Twin Peaks more than anything and will argue till the end of time that it's the best TV show ever made. The first season that is, we don't talk about the second or the third. Let's just leave it at that. So when I was introduced to Fire Walk With Me, I was incredibly excited as you would expect, however it fell flat and it fell hard. Which I guess begs the question, why did I include it on this list? Well regardless of my negative review, the film itself still soars with the Lynchian style we have all come to know and love. The film follows a young FBI agent who disappears while investigating a murder miles from Twin Peaks that may be related to the future murder of Laura Palmer. Not only that, but it also chronicles Laura Palmer's last week of life before her untimely death. The film stars all of our favourites from the TV show aside from a handful of notable characters. Acting as a prequel to his hit show, Fire Walk With Me marked a shift towards a more fragmented narrative that Lynch would go on to include in his films following this point. To accompany this shift, he also began to incorporate more horror elements and he does this by using a home as a place of terror, something which has always been present in the world of Twin Peaks. An example of this being when Laura Palmer creeps up the stairs to her bedroom only to be met by the petrifying sight of Bob, who was freakishly hiding behind her chest of drawers. Yes, the film was crucified upon release by critics and moviegoers, and like I said, I was thoroughly disappointed, but the film is comprised of strong moments that are worthy of your attention. Plus, the question never gets old who killed Laura Palmer? Coming in at 4, Lost Highway. We've met before, haven't we? Yep, this film is incredibly creepy. Released back in 1997, Lost Highway kicks off after a bizarre encounter at a party, which results in a jazz saxophonist getting framed for the murder of his wife and sent to prison, where he morphs into a young mechanic and begins leading a brand new life. Now, if you're a fan of Lynchian cinema, you'll know that there's no shortage of metaphorical boogeyman in Lynch's films. However, Lost Highway has perhaps the most notable and chilling in the form of the mystery man, played by Robert Blake. Now, now what makes this mystery thriller so damn terrifying is that it has no respect for narrative boundaries, nor does it rely on the main characters in any way really. The first half of the film builds much like a rickety scaffolding before the second half begins and that scaffolding comes completely undone beneath you. Of course, the scariest part of Lost Highway is the aforementioned mystery man, who Fred Madison, played by Bill Pullman, meets at a party. Following the encounter, Fred tells his wife about a dream he had, about someone else being in their bed. Cue the lighting change and subtle sound design, creating an incredibly palpable atmosphere. This is of course a dream within itself, and after waking up, Fred turns to his wife, only to be met with the face of the mystery man. Yeah, look, I'm a broken record at this point, but I don't want to ruin any more of this film for you. Watch it, trust me, you'll not be disappointed. Just mentally scarred. Coming in at 3, Mulholland Drive. Released back in 2001, this popular David Lynch film follows Naomi Watts, who after a car wreck on Mulholland Drive has amnesia, resulting in her teaming up with a perky Hollywood hopeful as they search for clues and answers across LA in a twisting venture beyond dreams and reality. Yep. A very Lynchian description. Recently, this film was actually voted as the greatest film of the 21st century so far in a poll by BBC Culture that asked 177 film critics across the globe. Yeah, that's quite the accomplishment. Now, Mulholland Drive is a fractured film with a not altogether narrative with equally fractured characters, yet somehow it works through small lingering moments but also as a whole. What some of you may not know is the film is comprised of a canned TV pilot and scenes filmed after the fact in order to transform 
transform the former wannabe show into a feature film. That's Lynch for you. Now just like our other numbers, I really don't want to ruin any part of this film for you if you have yet to see it, but one scene that I have to mention comes at the beginning of the film, and it's still perhaps one of the scariest jump scares I've ever witnessed. The scene kicks off with two men having a discussion in a diner, regarding the dream one of them had about a man who looks at the back of the building. I quote, He's the one who's doing it, I can see him through the wall. The two men exit, approaching the wall behind the diner, and this is where the classic Lynchian sound design kicks in, making the moment almost unbearable. Then from behind the wall appears the bum, disfigured and monstrous to look at. It's an exceptional jump scare and proves that horror doesn't have to reside in one specific genre. Coming in at 2, Inland Empire. Released in 2006, this thriller follows an actress, Laura Dern, who begins to adopt the persona of one of her characters, resulting in her world becoming a nightmarish hell. Inland Empire may perhaps be David Lynch's most experimental film on our list, and that says a lot. The best way to describe it is an assault on all the senses. It's surreal, yet horrifying. Like most Lynchian films, it has a distinct dreamlike tone, with the film managing to make the sound of a train or the flicker of a light bulb crawl and nest under your skin. Now, arguably the most terrifying terrifying moment of this film comes to us at the end. Now I don't want to spoil it for you, all I can say though is that it involves a distorted face in a crude copy and paste style of imposed imagery. Yes, that's a bizarre explanation, but trust me, it's horrifying to feast upon. This is also a callback to an earlier scene in the movie, where the audience watches on as Dern slowly approaches the camera from far away. It takes us a moment, but we realise that all is not well. You squint, tilt your head, but as you do it's already too late, and the same screaming distorted face is right in the lens, scarring us for years to come. Lynch is the stuff of nightmares, and Inland Empire is a prime example of the nightmarish world Lynch resides in. And finally, coming in at number one, Erase the Head. Released back in 1976, Eraserhead is far and away David Lynch's best and scariest films of all time. The film follows Henry Spencer, a man attempting to survive his industrial environment, angry girlfriend, and the unbearable screams of his newly born mutant child. This film is honestly traumatizing, yet I can't help but love it. I can't tell you how many dates I've watched this film on, too many, at my request of course. Those dates didn't last long, as you can imagine. Anyway, I digress. Trying to describe this film as the equivalent of asking someone to play Beethoven's Piano Sonata number 32 in C minor. It's impossible. However, I can say that this film is a surreal nightmare that we love to feast upon in all the weirdest ways. Now, what makes this film so bizarre is that it's incredibly uncanny. His characters are otherworldly and the world they exist in dreamlike. But what lingers in the brain is the imagery. The uncomfortable dinner table scene that shows a cooked chicken begin to gyrate and bleed. It's incredibly disturbing, yet there's something comical about watching the mother run out of the room screaming. But not at the chicken, but the weird reality they exist within. And of course, we can't forget about the mutant baby. Look, I don't want to ruin this film for you, but the mutant baby will linger in your grey matter for years to come. The entire movie feels like an open wound, and if you're searching for stitches, you're not going to find them here. Just saying. Well, there we have it. Do you guys agree with our list? Were there any other David Lynch films that you think we missed? Leave us all your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below. Before I go though, I just want to respond to a few comments from one of our last videos. Top 5 Scariest Dragons in Mythology Thomas Lamb 5 said, Plot twist. Lucy is the scariest dragon of them all. Here be Lucy. Beware. Yep, this still isn't old. I love when you guys suggest I put myself at number 1 on every single list we have. Even the monster ones. Thank you. Dream Seller said, Still waiting for top 5 scary Lucy's in history. Spoiler alert, they are all McPhee. Yeah, yeah, again, this is great, truly. So fun. Jinkatsu Han said, Hi Lucy, I enjoyed this video very much, thank you. You did, however, miss one very scary dragon. You miss Satan himself. Yes, he takes on the form of a dragon as described in the Book of Revelations. He has seven heads and ten horns. Just an FYI. You're doing a great job. I love this channel. Thank you. I did not know that. Thank you for that info. If we do a part two, Satan will definitely be number one. And on that note, if you haven't already, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss another scary video. Until next time, see you later.